Good morning, church, and happy Easter from Union Avenue. While for most of our congregation, stay at home means stay away from our church building, we three just happen to live here, and everything's good. We've been keeping an eye on the place while you're gone. Since August of last year, Union Avenue has become our home. But today, each one of your homes is becoming Union Avenue, as we are all gathered on our devices to share in streaming worship. Because on this Easter morning, we know that nothing can separate us from the love of God and Jesus Christ, even in this unexpected season of Corona Tide. Thanks for joining us, and now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please join us for the call to worship. Siblings in Christ, on this most holy day when our Savior Jesus Christ passed from death to life, we gather with the church throughout the world in worship and jubilation. Through the light and the word, through the bread and wine, we recall Christ's death and resurrection. We share Christ's triumph over sin and death, and with invincible hope, we await Christ's coming again. Hear the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and God was life, and the life was the light of all the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Church, happy Easter. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Rejoice, all you peoples, and celebrate, all you nations. For the tomb is empty and the stone has been rolled away. God's love cannot be bound by anything, not even death. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us pray. Glorious Lord of life, you have rolled the stone away and the tomb is empty. Nothing can defeat your love for all humankind. The night is past, and with dawn comes new creation. Christ is risen to bring us hope and life. Grant that we who celebrate with joy Christ's rising from the dead 
May ourselves be raised to renewed lives this day. Fill your church all over the world with the power that flows from Christ's resurrection, so that in the midst of this struggling age, it may once again signal a renewed humanity, risen with invincible hope in Christ's love. Alleluia and Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew in the 28th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to God's people. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. These are the words of our tradition. God grant us insight. Good morning, church. Happy Resurrection Sunday. This is your General Minister and President, Terry Hort Owens, and I am so excited to be gathered with you across our entire church in the U.S. and Canada to worship together on Easter morning. We had great expectations for Easter, as we always do. We planned and executed part of our Lenten studies. We were preparing for special music, special sermons, our children were going to give their wonderful Easter speeches. We would have dramas. We would invite friends and family to worship with us on Easter Sunday. And at my house, the entire Owens family gathers each year for Easter dinner. And I'm the cook. I am normally cooking on Easter weekend in addition to everything else. But none of this happened 
the way we had expected. Our society is in the midst of a disruption, the likes of which we have never seen in our entire lives. And we have been clinging and holding on to familiar and things and traditions that give us comfort, even as we're forced to try new ways and learn new things about how we can bring worship to the masses when we cannot physically gather. We've been reaching out because we cannot physically comfort those who are sick and grieving. We have not been able to gather for celebrations. And yet we've been holding on to the familiar, hoping that Surely when this is all over, things will go back to the way they have been. But church, we are in a new world and it is unlikely that things will ever be the same again. And that, I argue, is a good thing. Our good friend Walter Brueggemann in his book, The Prophetic Imagination, talks about the importance of the ministry of imagination. It's important to imagine first and then implement, he says, because anything can be implemented. We must prepare ourselves, church, for that ministry of imagination, not only for being relevant in the new world, but as a church to help shape that new world. Grounding ourselves in the spirit, feeding ourselves on scripture, giving ourselves the courage to imagine, the courage to do, the courage to change the courage to live beyond the disruptions in new ways, the courage to help shape a new world, permission to change, permission to let things go, and freedom from fear of what will happen when we do change. It's not an option anymore. This is the world we are in. That first Easter was filled with disruptions of all sorts on Friday, Those women and the disciple John stood at the foot of the cross witnessing one of the most horrific deaths known to humankind. Jesus died beaten, battered, and bloodied on a cross. And when he was laid in a tomb, those days between Friday and Sunday must have been the most devastating of their lives. His followers all around the countryside, traumatized, afraid, and in exile. Mary and the women were clinging to those familiar rituals and traditions as they went to the tomb early that Sunday morning, hoping to anoint the Lord's body. They hadn't been able to do it on their Sabbath, so they went intent on being sure that what they knew was right was done. And as they arrive at the tomb, another disruption. The stone is rolled away, the tomb is empty, and Jesus' body is not there. They run to get Peter and the other disciple who come to take a look. And one disciple looks in, but doesn't go in, but believes. Peter goes in and they leave, going back to their homes. Mary is left there in the garden weeping. And at a certain point, she gets up to go inside the tomb and sees two angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot in the place where Jesus had laid. They ask her, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? And she says, I do not know what they have done to my Lord. And if you know where they've taken his body, please tell me so that I can go and retrieve it. As she turns around, she sees someone she thinks is the gardener. And he asks her, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? And she says, sir, if you know where my Lord is, please tell me where I can find him. He calls her name, and it is then that she knows that it is Jesus, Mary. He assures her that he is fine. He will ascend to the creator, but that she is to go and tell the disciples that he is alive and will soon meet them in Galilee. Another disruption. Mary, a woman, is given the awesome responsibility of sharing the gospel news that Jesus has risen for the very first time in all of history. Mary runs to tell the disciples, and I'm sure they all imagined that things would simply go back to the way they were. Jesus was alive. He will have dinner at Mary and Martha's house in Bethany. He will eat with us. He will talk with us. 
People will come and they will listen to his teachings and he will heal them. It will all be like it was before. But they did not yet understand the meaning of the resurrection. They didn't yet understand what Jesus meant by this kingdom of God that he had been talking about. Before he ascends, he reminds them that he will send to them the Holy Spirit who will teach them and remind them about what he has taught. He charges them to go and tell the story of his death and resurrection, baptizing those in the name of his Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them everything that they have taught, they have been taught by him. Church, if ever there is a time when we must claim this prophetic imagination and claim the courage to change, it is now. In the midst of disruption, The church of Jesus Christ was born in the midst of disruption. People not understanding what would come of Jesus' death, not understanding the new normal, the new world that they would inhabit once he had ascended into heaven. That first church gathered in their homes. They did radical things like put all their resources together to ensure that everyone had enough. They kept the tradition of the Lord's Supper, which we continue to this day, remembering Jesus' death and resurrection until he comes again. They told stories, shared testimonies. They were living new lives, trying to create a new world. And 2,000 years later, we are carrying their traditions with us, but we have our own disruption to which we must respond. Church, we must be ready to not only imagine a new world, but to help shape the new world that is surely coming. And I want to remind you that there will be church after this. There will be hope and glory and love after this disruption. There will be peace and joy after this disruption and even in the midst because of Christ. I hope that you will continue to feed your spirits on the word of God, to listen to the teaching of the Holy Spirit, to gather as we can gather and feed and support one another. But I pray that your prophetic imagination takes flight and that we are all able to have the courage to imagine this new world that is already here and how we will be church in it and how we will help to shape the world so that it will become that kingdom of God where all are welcome and all have enough. This is my prayer, my hope. This is the imagination to which God calls us. Get ready, church. God love you, and so do I. Hello, disciples. One of the most important things that we can do to keep our church strong during this season of disruption is to ensure that we are giving to our local congregations. During this season of Easter, our church gathers an annual Easter offering, which benefits the work of the general ministries. 
those ministries that serve our entire church, focusing on the work of congregations and clergy, but also ensuring that our work goes from our doorsteps to the very ends of the earth. In this season of Easter, I pray that you will remember that the covenant we have through Jesus Christ is a covenant that must be lived out across our whole church. Every time we gather, every time we work together, we are working to ensure that none of us has to do this work alone. So as you prepare your offering for the Easter offering this year, I pray that you will give generously. There is a new world, and we must be strong in order to respond to it and help to shape it in the image of God. Thank you so much for your generous gifts. God bless you. Well, good morning, happy Easter, and greetings from the other Union Avenue. Some of you may see this communion table and be saying, hey, now that looks a little familiar. Well, it should. Uh, This is a communion table from Union Avenue Christian Church St. Louis, uh, which our uh, siblings in Christ at the Union Avenue Christian Church in Litchfield uh, have been borrowing since Advent as they moved toward trying out communion by intinction. it's kind of like that in church. We, we lend to each other. We borrow from one another. We make sure that church can happen. And so I'm very much reminded of this borrowing and, and lending here as we come to communion this holy Easter morning. You see, on the first day of Holy Week, as the story goes, all the people throughout Judea, they were at the dusty gates of Jerusalem, right? And they were uh, waving palm branches and saying Hosanna with their lips and praising in their hearts. And it's then that Jesus asked to borrow a donkey. He needed one. On the Thursday that followed, Jesus was, you know, rented or was given an upper room by which to celebrate the Passover with the disciples. He needed a room. Even on the afternoon of the resurrection, Jesus was invited into a house in Emmaus, and he used the bread of that hospitality to break and bless. And once again, Jesus needs to borrow a communion table and to use the bread and cup of hospitality provided. Jesus needs to borrow your communion table and to use your bread and cup and hospitality this morning as he gathers us together in God's great spirit of love as we once again remember and give thanks. And so one time when Jesus was gathered with his disciples, he took a loaf of bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to those gathered and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. In like manner, Jesus took the cup, saying this cup is the covenant renewed My love poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, remember me. And so every time we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes. We are one bread and one body, one cup of blessing. Though... We are many throughout the earth. This church community is scattered. In your many kitchens, in your living rooms, in your pajamas, rest your hands lightly upon these elements which we set aside today to be a sacrament, and let us ask God's blessing upon them. Gentle Redeemer, there is no lockdown on your blessing, no quarantine on grace. Send your spirit of life and love, power and blessing upon every table where your child shelters in place, that the bread may be broken and gathered in love, and that this cup poured out to give hope to all. Risen Christ, live in us that we may live in you. Breathe in us that we may breathe in you. Amen. Amen. And now we would like to invite you to share with us in the Lord's Prayer, using those words that are familiar to your tradition. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we would invite you to partake of communion in whatever elements that you have gathered or in a spirit of meditation as we celebrate this feast together. The bread of life and the cup of love. Thanks be to God. The bread of life and the cup of grace. Thanks be to God. Let us pray in thanksgiving for this meal of grace, rejoicing that by every method of our worship we have embodied the truth that Christ's love is not limited by buildings made with human hands nor contained with human ceremonies, but blows as free as the Spirit in all places. Spirit of Christ, you have blessed our tables and our lives. May the eating of this bread give us the courage to speak faith and act in love, not only in church sanctuaries, but in your precious world. And may the drinking of this cup renew our hope, even in the midst of pandemic. Wrap your hopeful presence around all whose bodies, spirits, and hearts need healing. And let us become your compassion and safe refuge. Amen. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for joining us together in Feast this day. Blessed Pascha, Happy Easter to all.
My friends, as Christ burst forth from the tomb, may new life burst forth from us and show itself in acts of love and healing to a hurting world. And may that same Christ who lives forever and is the source of our new life keep our hearts rejoicing and grant us peace both this day and always. For Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.